You know, many of us don't really know what to do to help someone who is choking, or we think we know, but maybe we don't know for sure. Sure, so EMS workers say it's really simple to learn what to do. Our Hany Ashivi has been learning CPR from EMS workers all morning, and is here to tell us what about uh, what techniques we can use to help somebody who might be choking. Hey, Hannah. Hi, good morning, Lee and Sharon. Good morning, everyone. So right now we're gonna demo what to do if you see someone choking. We're here with Josh, Ella, and Rob Couture from the South Portland Fire Department. Guys, thanks for being here. Rob, tell us exactly how do we start if we see someone choking in front of us? Sure, so the first thing to know is there's two types of choking. There's a complete and an incomplete airway obstruction. And the difference between those two things is whether or not the person is making any sound. Mm. So if they're coughing and choking, their body is already doing everything it can to try to get rid of whatever's in there that's an obstruction. The best thing you can do for that person is nothing. Oh, sometimes people feel the need to go and pat your back, Do the right? back slap, right? And the back slap actually makes you breathe in. And that's the last thing we're trying to do. We're trying to get them to breathe out. Okay, good so to know. So interfering with somebody who's actively choking is really not a great idea. Just let their body do what it can do to get rid of it. If that doesn't work, at some point, that obstruction is gonna become complete and they're gonna stop making sound. Mm. That means there's no air going in, they're gonna start changing color and they're not breathing. That's the time that we have to intervene. And Josh is gonna pretend. Josh is pretending that he has a complete airway obstruction right now. So he's choking, he's not breathing. Ella is going to come up behind him and she's going to place her hands right above his belly button. She's going to make a fist and wrap her other hand around and then she's going to push straight into her and up, almost like a J motion. And what she's trying to do is she's trying to move all the air in Josh's lungs up to get rid of that obstruction oh. and hopefully clear that and get him to breathe again. And Rob, this is something anyone can do. Absolutely anyone can do, yeah. Um, and what should I do, Rob, if the person is too big? Yeah, so if the person's too big, or let's say it's a pregnant mom and we don't want to push on baby, the other position you can take for this is you see that Ella's brought her hands up now mm -hmm. to the same position she was doing chest compressions in earlier. And do she's the made a fist there. And she's going to do those thrusts right there. This time, instead of in and up, she's going to go straight back, almost like she's performing a chest compression. Same idea. We're trying to move the air from his lungs and relieve that obstruction. Now, Josh isn't breathing, so at uh -oh. some point, he's going to go unconscious. Right. And when that happens, Ella's going to lower him down to the floor. And for people who are choking with a complete airway obstruction who go unconscious, we go straight to chest compressions. So her next thing mm -hmm. is to go to compressions that look just like the hands-only CPR compressions. And she's going to do those until help arrives. The other thing is now is the time that we need to call 911. We need help coming. Okay, good so to know. So call 911, chest compressions, until help gets there. Thank you so much, Rob. And Lee and Sharon, these are skills that anyone should know how to do. And truly, the idea here is for bystanders to act and help anyone in distress. Back to you guys. Yeah, great information right there, Hannah. Thank you so much. Appreciate that.